It's day six of vlog November, baby. Thank you for coming in. Welcome back, welcome back. Or welcome if this is your first time watching me. My name is Vivian. It's your favorite cousin on the internet. And if you are returning, you already knew that. Okay, let's get into it. Fast forward to the grown things now. I'm working on them soul things now. We're making a reversible bonnet today. What? A real tutorial. I know, round of applause. Baby, make that hand clap. <laughs> like, what? What? We're gonna make a reversible double satin bonnet today. Not a baby bonnet, not a bonnet for kids, a bonnet for yourself. So I'm gonna cut out everything, all the dimensions, everything you need will be down below. So for the supplies you'll need, you'll need some type of cutting shears, a, what is this? Ooh. What is this? Rotary cutter. A drawstring threader. A few like needles or clips, whatever you want to keep the fabric in line. The length of your head circumference in elastic form. A, some type of like fraying liquid, um, because it's a satin and sometimes it frays. Some type of matching thread. You can either do a lighter version or a darker version. If you do light, and then a dark color, I would always go with the darkest thread you have or whatever you have available. But with this, I think this will look really nice when it's like threaded, you know what I'm saying? I think it'll just pop better. Then you'll need your measuring tape. You also need a fine point disappearing ink kind of pen, or you can use chalk, whatever you prefer. Some clear um, bobbins. Then you're gonna need, I believe this foot is called like a measuring foot, if I'm not mistaken. I'll leave everything down below as well too. Then you're gonna need some kind of like, um, I forgot what these are called, but they're like mini shears for loose thread and things like that. Your labeling, this is my label. Then some type of like test fabric so that you can test your stitches and stuff like that. These are just two different ones. You can tell this one I use for like buttonholes and lines here and there, but you always wanna have some type of tester thread before you start any project. So you wanna take your fabric. So I already did this one. You want to basically take the entire sheet of fabric and fold it hot dog style, so horizontal. Get all the edges, then you want to bring them together and fold them hamburger style. And then you want to lay it flat. But you want to make sure that you have this edge right here situated. So you want to make sure the edge side is to the left. On top of what you already did. Or, you know, if this is your first layer, you're just gonna do, put it down and then do the second one. So it should look like this when you get done. If I didn't do a great job explaining how to fold it up, the tutorial will be in the description, don't worry. You start at the corner at zero with your measuring tape. Extend basically at an angle. It could be in the middle, it could be to the side, it doesn't really matter. Make sure everything's flat. Mark off 14 inches and just do the same thing all the way down. The standard size for a normal head would be like 12 inches to like here but because we're doing ruffles we want to do 14 yeah so I'm just gonna mark all the way down so when you get done you should have two big 14 inch circles so the next step would be to just leave your first layer facing up, so the shiny side facing up towards you. Then for your top layer, you wanna put it face down, so the shiny side down, basically matching. Then you just wanna match up all the edges, and I'm just gonna match this up and clip it. All right, I got everything clipped. So what I ended up doing, 
you want to make sure you have an area that you leave as like your opening and you'll need to remember the area so you can either just mark it with your pen or you could just put a different color clip this this is the only blue clip around the whole circle so now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and i'm just going to sew around all the edges if you don't have that sewing foot that i showed you guys in the beginning you could literally just go around from the edge of the bonnet so this is one inch on my measuring tape and you could just mark off one inch from the edge and go all the way around and just keep marking it off with your measuring tape i don't want to do that so that's why i have the measuring foot but if you don't have it it is okay it's a little bit longer but you still get the same result if you just measure it out so for my sewing machine settings I have the stitch length at 2.5 and it's on 3.5 as far as the center of the needle and I think that's pretty much all and it's a straight stitch. And then this is just my little touch strip and it's right here and that's how I just make sure that it's going to turn out right before I start a project. So you want to get to your sewing machine. You want to start past your marker. That way when you loop it back around, you'll be like, okay, let me stop here because I see the clip. So I'm going to start like a little bit below my marker here. Because on this like measuring foot, there aren't actual numbers. I go in with the measuring tape just to make sure it's like even. I'm going to just do half an inch from the edge of the bonnet all the way down basically just take your measuring tape measure from the edge a half an inch wherever this stop set on the edge here make sure your needle is in the same position to where it sits right before this Okay, so once you get back down to that marking, I forgot to say, you want to leave like maybe an inch or two open just because, you know, this is a bigger like bonnet. I think one inch is fine, but I just left more space to give myself room to work. Once I'm done with that, now I'm just going to trim up the edges. This is where you take your fabric scissors or fabric shears. And you can start really at any like angle and then just cut around the edge. Don't get too, too close to the point where you end up cutting the thread, but just enough to where you can get the bulk off. When you get done, it should look like this. You can either recycle or throw your scraps away. Then once you get to that point, you want to find your opening again. I lost mine for a second there. Then you just want to flip everything right side out. Stick your hand in there. Just make sure all the edges are fully out. Then you want to flatten it and just find where they meet. You may have to like hold one section, pull down with other two fingers until you get like the edge. And then you want to take some clips and just keep that edge down and clip it down. And then you're going to iron the edges. And honestly, you don't have to clip the entire thing if you don't want to. You can clip just like an edge of it just to get the foundation. And then as you're ironing, you can basically do what I'm doing. That way, you don't have to take out the time to sit here and clip everything but you just have to be careful because the iron is hot baby and with this it's not not that it's not that hard so let me get my iron hold on almost dropped y'all lord but i do know one thing though women they come they go saturday through sunday monday monday through sunday yo baby i love you one day maybe we'll someday grow till then i sit my 
So this part, it might not look the best, but basically with the opening, I just folded the two edges and tried to still keep it in the circle part of things. So hopefully y'all can see that. Like I still tried to make it round, but it's really easy. You would just, it wouldn't be ironed, it would be loose and you would just stick your fingers in and wiggle them, press it down, same thing, press it down, wiggle them, press it down, press it down, wiggle them till you got to the edge and just look to make sure it's still round. Now at this point, before we take it back to the sewing machine, you want to take your measuring tape and just measure an inch and a half. Okay, so you want to take it from zero to a half inch, which is right here. And the half inch should be on the edge of the bonnet. And you want to just hold it down. Take your pen or your chalk or your pencil, whatever you decided to use. And then you're just going to mark off and just go all the way around the bonnet. Once you finish that stuff, bring the sewing machine, baby. It's time to get to sewing. So when you get to the sewing machine, there's a line on the sewing foot. So even, even if you don't have one of these like measuring foots, you can also use the needle and just hover it over your marking. You wanna try to take two fingers and just spread it as you're sewing so that it's as flat as possible. And then you wanna take this hand and kinda, of, you know, like hold it and let it rotate, but keep it as like a guideline just to pull it. Hopefully that makes sense. When you get done, it should look like this. And remember to leave that opening. Don't sew right here. This next part is a bit easier because we don't have to do any more measuring. Now you just wanna put everything back on the sewing machine again. And you want to measure from the sewing line. So this line here, a inch and a half from this line with your measuring tape. This time, go ahead and go past the opening. So you see how you left this space here? Instead, go right under it and keep going. Don't leave a space because this is where your elastic is about to be inserted in. So when you get done, it should look like this. And then just snip off the little extra pieces. You can do it at the end, but I like to just go ahead and do it while I see it. Because sometimes when you don't do it, you don't see it later. And you're like, well, what? But that's just because I have a sewing business. And I don't want to sell nothing to nobody that look crazy. But anyway, this satin I chose on the inside is not great satin to use. It's like, ugh. It is great satin in, in, in regards to like its softness, but it's just, it kept getting caught on my sewing machine. Anyway, I'm just snipping off the little ugly pieces. I think we're good at this point. So now we've created the elastic channel. So now all you would do is take your elastic and your drawstring threader and you would just put your elastic in. For me, my elastic was 23 inches. My measurements and everything will be down below anyway, but it was 23 inches because I don't like my bonnets too, too tight. I think my head is like a 22.5 or something. I don't know, but basically you'll put in your elastic into your threader, kind of make it, you know, taut, however you want to do it. You want to insert it inside of that opening and then go in between where you was like sewing the channel, you see? Hopefully you get what I'm saying. This is my first sewing tutorial, y'all. Please bear with me. I'm, 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 
I'm learning as I go. Basically, I'm just pulling the bonnet and pushing in the um, threader, elastic threader or whatever. At some point, I would hold this elastic in. So I guess I'll go ahead and hold it now, but you really don't have to until you get like further off. So once you thread it all in there, you gotta be careful, pull the elastic out as well as the like threader thing. It might be a bit hard to pull. I'm trying to see now, figure out how you can do it and pull it. If you happen to lose like the elast elastic on the edge or anything, just use some tweezers because I had to like just finesse. Um, that way I didn't have to like re-thread the whole thing. I went ahead and just made the needle go down. I didn't sew anything yet. I just want to keep this in place while I check the perimeter and make sure the elastic is like straight and not lopsided. Let me clip this a couple of times so I don't lose it. That is the cutest thing ever. And it's not too tight. Okay. I was just trying to make sure because we ain't got time. Okay. So now at this point, after you've like checked it, make girl. After you've checked it, make sure like everything's to your liking. Just keep the two elastic ends together. Taking these clips off. And then when you go to the sewing machine, just lay it flat and sew right on top i'll show y'all always test it again once you like sew it so i'm just gonna sew straight back up um, a couple times over the elastic okay so i'm just i just sewed a few times over it and again we did it straight so it, you will cut this off in a minute i'm gonna try it on one more time and then we'll just close up the stitching here and then you'll be done okay I'm going to try it on one more time. At this point, I don't have to hold it or have any clips in because I already, like, sewed the elastic together. I kind of want to make it flip it back out. Let me see. My hair is still, like, damp, but I still want to put my hair in there just to be on the safe side because I do have thick hair. Mm. That... It's giving chef because I cooked it. What they be saying? Child, that's what them kids be saying. I don't know. <laughs> We're the new adults. Can you believe that? Like, that's crazy. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these right here. You're really supposed to use regular scissors. Oh, well. Okay. And then... That'll be that for that. Then I'm just going to close up this edge again. Sew over the edge. I'm going to clip this too. Okay, so the edges are closed up. And then we're also going to sew. Remember where I told you guys I would tell you later? That area that you left open right here, you're going to sew over that too to fully like close it out. This part is a little tricky, so do your best. It's okay if it's not perfect. Uh, it definitely looks wonky, I kid you not, but hey, it's not that serious. I'm not making these for anyone, so... When it comes to like, and this is my first time doing it, I give myself grace when I make something for the first time. Not always, but I try to anyway. Because it's your first time making it. Like, you don't know, you know what I'm saying? You don't know you gonna suck till you do it. Or be great, you know? Just keep practicing. So this is the bonnet. It's so stinking cute. Like, I think this is the cutest little bonnet that I ever did make. And I don't have any like this. And I just feel like, who wouldn't want a bonnet? Like, who wouldn't want this as a gift? I just want this as a bag. Like, this is such a cute, like, bag or something. I don't know. But I know it's not a bag. Anyway. <laughs> 
it's just so stinking cute and then this part is a closing like i said i messed up on it but you literally as you like flip it around you don't know where it's at you would have to literally go looking for it you're not gonna see that and then the last 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 step is to put your labeling on there now i have i don't really want you to know i want you to know i made it but i don't i don't want to waste a label on me you know what i'm saying like these are for customers though i love my labels and i do be wanting my own label on my own stuff but still i got a market coming up so i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna put it on there but normally i would just put it on there and it would just be really cute but we just won't but eventually i probably will but until like i get situated with my market stuff then we'll see because i don't want to run out of labels because it my labels come from nowhere near me and they take a while to get here so thank you guys so much for being here for vlog vimber i'm so grateful even if you didn't know how to sew and you just watched it just to get pure entertainment and learn i'm so glad you did because it's really not that hard and you may not have any of this stuff and that's okay because guess what these will be on my website i'm gonna make more and they're gonna be like way more professional and you guys will be able to buy them so in the meantime stay tuned for that my website will be linked down below as well everything you need to be in the description box thank you guys so much for being here and hopefully you learned how to make your first reversible ruffle bonnet and if you did please tag me because i would totally love to see them i would totally love to see them for sure i'm in love with this bonnet i can't like i just want to make a million of them i literally do they're just the cutest thing they're just so cute and i really needed one and i'm just glad that i actually have one because i don't have i think i already said this but i don't have any that have ruffles and i think you know you just want something that eats and when it comes to like like my packaging and everything as far as like this is my sewing brand so it kind of matches you know what i'm saying the silver the gray i don't have black satin and i really want to get some but it's very expensive the kind that i'm thinking about getting because i don't do cheap fabric i, I just can't do it so yeah i will see you guys tomorrow 7 p.m sharp sharp 7 p.m sharp eastern standard time make sure you guys share make sure you guys like and comment definitely consider subscribing it means so much to me so freaking much y'all can't see the heart that's a botched heart but you get the point and i'll see you guys tomorrow bye